not a real sport. You can't watch all of it. You just like see them start and then you see them finish and it takes a long time and it smells bad. school in Sydney, uh, independent school, so you always see the sense of history and pride in the place. We're keen that the Newington man is, uh, is a good man. So our job is to produce good young men who know what they stand for and why. Sesquicentenary really is about acknowledging and, and honouring the past yes. and, and also celebrating that we've got a vision for the future. Rowing is traditional and well known and Newington had its golden era in the 1990s. We're hoping to get it back, so it's highly competitive. And rowing, of course, is all focused on six months of work for a, in the end, of, under a six minute race. Our primary priority is, if, if you look at the program as a whole, is to, to make men out of young boys, better men out of young boys. So people who do rowing are um, exposed to situations that are probably tougher than most of the situations they've been through in their life to date. It's interesting working with the year 10 boys. There's a massive amount of changes, whether that be hormonally with those boys, um, peer group, those sorts of things. Um, voice starts to come forward for many of them if they actually want to break out of their shells, break out of their junior school personalities, if you like, and actually, yeah, start to become men. I feel, I feel we're, you know, right on the cusp of, of a great a golden era in, in Newington rowing. There is a tremendous amount of pressure on these boys, not just because they're in the first year 10 eight. They do, in a sense, get inferred or told that Listen, you know, they are the potential first eight crew for our sesquicentenary year. In terms of our build-up towards the, uh, you know, the sesquicentenary, uh, it's a very exciting time and the boys are, are very lucky to be at the school during this time. Obviously there'll be a heightened expectation from some that it's going to be our big year. And, and the build-up that we're going to feel every year towards that is going to be very exciting and I have been mindful of trying to set the foundations with this group that are going to, that we will be relying on in 2013. Uh, we'll have to be careful we don't promote as a year that we're going to do very well in every activity because that's going to be a worry that there's going to be undue pressure on boys. We are the 150th year at the Newington College has been around so if we don't win we'll get shot. We'll get shot. Time to work. Get set for 10. Day, guys, spin the boat, let's head down. Good. start making big changes. You're looking at 10 weeks of rowing before the head of the river. 
and that goes like that. This silhouette shot's a beauty for showing the, the, the angles of the shoulders. And you can see here clearly the angle of the blade, angle of the shoulders. Remember the angle of the blade down to the water should be mirrored by the angle of the shoulders. So the outside shoulder has to be at least level, but it should be higher. So when you're coming through like this, that's how it should be, right? To achieve that, my outside elbow is higher than the hand. And that's how it has to be, because that's what you want. You want the pull to be higher than the handle, so that you can keep the top edge of your blade under the water. Everything we do is about what is creating power out there, what's levering the boat, and that's the blade pull. And you can't keep your top edge under the water if the drawing force is under the handle. It's just going to pull it down like that and your blade's going to wash out. We want to make sure that we keep it covered all the way through. Okay, Luke. Right. All the shins are vertical here, which is great. We're getting good tuck up. This is a great position at the front here to be in, right? Full reach, full tuck. Fully closed up, the angle between the thigh and the, and the upper body here. Uh, Luke, you can see you're much more upright than what Jonas is, right? The same with you, Zach, right? In fact, you're straighter than Andrew is there, mate. So if you, you know, put, put you against, if we're able to bring that down and you know, paste it alongside there, um, it, it's, it's massive. Yeah. We have to be really closely following the guy in front because otherwise, by the time Chinese whispers take effect, poor old Zach ends up at half slide. And this will come with time, but how much time have we got? The day to the head of river is still the same. Putting the blade in the water is the last thing that happens in the recovery. It's not the first thing that happens in the drive. Okay? So you can see, Jonas, how much body you've lost. You can see there, Robbo, how much you've lost. You've pushed, you've driven a quarter of your slide just to get the blade wet just to get the blade wet. We don't do all those squats in the gym, all those, all those squat jumps, all the running, everything, all this work on our legs to use the legs to get the blade wet, right? The blade gets wet by doing that with the hands and that's what we do these strikes for. And this is under, this is under race conditions, don't forget. So this is, you know, this is when the whips are cracking. And like I said, Everything we do is targeted at having 240 perfect strokes as hard as you can get on it on head of the river day. They're the sorts of things that we want to work on. This is what we see, this is what's limiting the boat speed. The erg is like, it just, it sorts people. It's, it's a big rowing machine that you kind of sit on for about eight, nine, ten minutes and you just kind of put your body through hell. You got to pull as hard as you physically can. Just sets times for two and a half kilometers. And that's where you're placed in boats. Hey gentlemen, welcome back. I hope everybody had a good holiday. You look great. Hopefully you've done a bit of work over the um, over the period, and uh, we'll certainly about to find out. Uh, just wanted to remind you all. all see you
we're going to do two pieces today, okay? Depending on how things look and how things go out there, we're thinking about maybe just swapping a couple of seats over. So um, make sure that you're on the job, please, with your warm-up. Good practice for race day, okay? To maintain control. Once you get that whole boat movement going and you get that, that smoothness of it, it feels really good like compared to some rugby games where you're just getting dropped on your head. Rowing would have to be one of the most physically demanding sports. My fitness has never been better. I feel and I, I think I get a lot of self-confidence from being so fit. I now I'm, I'm a lot more committed, I find, to stuff that I do. Like, because rowing is a really big commitment. In rowing, everyone has to be together same time. One person's not pulling their weight, the boat's not going to go as well. If you're out of time, you can't row well, you're not going to be the fastest you can be. It's not a sport, it's a lifestyle. At the start of the season, I just wanted to be rowing just because I wanted to get fit. And now I, I find I do it, I'm doing it for the crew. I'm rowing for those other eight boys that are in that boat. The main people I'm doing it for is my crew. Yeah, you, know, you, you like rowing, but you do it also because it's hard, and that's why. That's why I do it, because it's hard. It's very hard. It's a very hard sport. And the training is hard. And all the training is leading up to a single event. Rowing pushes you to your limits and past it all the time. Um, each time we do a piece, in each race we do. It's an incredibly tough sport in an era where society and schools are getting softer. During the race, you don't feel anything, and by the end of it, you're dead. You won't, your arms can't move, they're that swollen, and your legs are cramping up. There's lactic acid eating away. You're training hard in the mornings, you're training in the evening, uh, you've got schoolwork, etc. You're constantly tired, you're falling asleep at your desk. It's so hard to just row that everything else seems quite easy. But it is very intense, a high degree of commitment and focus.
high pressure, intense training sessions all the time, putting pressure on everything I do, I perform better. That 2,000 metres will be incredibly painful every, every stroke of it. You get a greater reward in life from something that was tough to do, tough to overcome than something that's easy. Look in the mirror and look yourself in the eye and say, I didn't take one light stroke tonight. It was the hardest row that we've had all year. And I did not back down. I did not take one light stroke. Then when you go into the heat of battle, you will be much better prepared for that. What it comes down to really is just like the feeling of winning when you win a race. It's just so good. And just after all that training, I can't, you can't kind of like, overcomes it. We like to be competitive, we like to make sure we play well and good sportsmanship and um, we would like to be in the, the top half of every activity. I, I, I don't think I'd like to be from a school that never really won anything and like I'd like to be from a school like Newington that has that reputation to be a contender and like come out like all of us like when we beat Joey's last year. You can row harder when you're like winning because it's just like you just keep in front of the other crews. When you're losing, it's like you got to catch up. The winning, oh, yeah. that, the best feeling. So much work put in. It's so good. It's a great feeling, isn't it? Really, winning is the most important thing I find for us, for our crew. Interesting what winning does, though. The seconds, I think one of their first races being the second crew was the King's Regatta. They took off, and suddenly the huge shock to them all is they were winning for most of the race. I think at the end of that they came second to Kings and some of the boys I think realised well actually we could win this thing. The seconds boat, they're a good bunch of guys. They're not they're not as athletic as the first crew, but they're all you know, willing to do the job and willing to get, get the work done and, and put the power in the water. We all want the same thing and we're all willing to put a part of ourselves on the line to get what we want. But in the long term, no one really goes, oh, do you remember that shore regatta at Cannon Chicken? Yeah, we won that. It's, it's who won the head of the river. If, if, you, if you see an old boy, he, he won't tell you he won the Scots regatta at, or the Joey's regatta at Iron Cove. I won the head of the river in 1954, whatever. It's, it's, I think the head of the river is the main, the, it's payday. A crew can win every regatta in the season, but if they come dead last ahead of the river, that's what they're going to be remembered for. If you look at most crews that win the head of the river, they usually don't win the first few races of the season. It's all about peaking towards the end. The head, you could lose every single race um, in the season as the first date, every single race, and then win the head of the river and you're the GPS. What do you think ships of that? Are rowing. Does that? Does that mean you're the best crew if you win the head of the river? It means you're focused. Rowing is a sport where determination and perseverance are measured in strokes and sweat. It is not a gentleman's sport. 
is not a sport for the faint hearted. It is a sport where you truly discover what many people are made of. Where you test yourself every day in preparation for an ultimate test, a single Saturday in order. Somewhere between the 1,000 metre mark and the finish line, you find out what it is you've been working so hard for. You're asking big questions of your body. And when the right answers are coming back, it's a feeling you know you'll never forget. I will now like to present to you the cruise level race in the black and white tomorrow. Like now I feel like it's all just been like so worth it. Like every moment like that's been hard at training and stuff, it's just so worth it. Amazing. <laughs> Second. Yeah. That's good. Alright, let's go. Oh,